Every decision is an economic one, coming from an economist. And when we look at how incentives drive the decisions that individuals make, and we apply it to markets made up of individuals like you and me and others, and then we hop on over and we bring that into government, and we understand that the individuals in government respond to incentives themselves, and we just kind of pull back the various layers of the onion to see that there are different incentive structures. These differences lead people to make different types of choices. And the choices that you and I make in our lives, even though driven by similar forces, may not necessarily lead to the intended outcomes that you and I would see coming from government. In fact, sometimes they're counterintuitive, counterintuitive decisions and what is that? Because we all know very good people who are in government, just like we know not so good people in government, but that is true in the marketplace as well. So let's just apply the same economic principles in both settings and see what we get. What is the outcome? Well, I think to understand the world in which we live and to live a better life one decision at a time, it's important to understand that we have uh, independence and we are free to choose. And we live in a world that's made up of many other humans that are just like us and different from us. So at the end of the day, we're focused on our own decisions, especially the college student and they only hear about the things swirling in political and social circles. They may capture a bit in the media about what's going on, but how do they filter what they're being told or what they're finding in social media to understand the world in a way in which it's not overwhelming, but it's applicable to their own lives? And at the end of the day, they understand that the best way to make their lives better as well as others is to simply focus on their own individual um, environments and then build out from there and assume the best in people. Given that I am an economist and I'm one of the key authors of Common Sense Economics, we boil it down to six economic principles. And if you take these principles and you say, okay, regardless of what's happening and how complicated things seem to get, it could be in your personal life, it could be with world events, you look at everyone chooses, every choice has a cost, and there's a list of others. Come to the talk and learn more or click on and find out more about those six elements. But it simplifies even the most complicated situations. And it doesn't have to be a swirl of anxiety that's coming at you. Unfortunately, the students of today have so much information and they have so many choices that often it can be very um, confusing and complicated and weigh them down and some even claim paralyzing. This approach gives them a simple approach and it's one that if you systematically make these decisions and it can be personal, it can involve money, most of them don't involve money, sure. that the decisions of today can have positive consequences that lie in the future. And the great thing about managing your own affairs is you best manage your own affairs by taking to, into account the people that we serve, the people that are in our circles. And I can, we can even bring this into faith. There has never been a time in my research that I think Christians have, n have not faced a challenge. There's always challenge in the life of the Christians because we're constantly moving beyond the obvious and we, consider, we, can, we concern ourselves with life for the living, but also eternal life. And the decisions that we make today, and they may influence our economic affairs, our social environments, or our political beings. We understand that this is but a blip in life eternal. And so keep our eyes on what, I don't wanna say the prize is, but what the mission is. 
and is to serve ourselves through God and to bring God and Jesus into every part of our lives. And we always have a decision. And this is the economics and the beauty of it all is we can choose to follow the Christ path or not. And it's an economic decision because every decision has a cost. And if we choose Christ's path, we sacrifice choosing the alternative path. Similarly, we choose that alternative path, we sacrifice Christ's path. So that's a very simple way to bring this into our personal lives. But if we apply it and we do what we call the amplifying effect, it's best to lead through example and bring things back to these six core principles, the principles that are founded just in the Ten Commandments. And you can move across different faiths, and we can look at the top two. And if we all agree on the top two, the world is an incredible place. But some, somehow, some way, we've lost where we're going. We need to find our compass. And for me, that compass is found in those six guiding principles. Hillsdale has provided a venue where I can go and I can find like-minded people who are trying to move through higher education at a time in which we have a lot of internal conflict and we are witnessing the transformation of higher education. And we can just look at the statistics, look at the changes in enrollment, the types of courses that are being offered, the rise in the price of college and the mass exodus of students who are leaving, the pressures that we're getting from government and others to rethink our model in corporations and businesses are saying we want the students who are coming out of college programs to be boots on the ground ready and add not only value in terms of skill, but also be forward thinking and being able to transform and be dynamic. And I think that the models that we have, we were taught with when we went through our PhD programs, they're valuable to us because they gave us a system that we could lean on and that we could actually execute in order to bring forward new students, undergraduates and graduates so that they were work ready and ready to hit the think tanks and do the research and participate in the scholarship. And we, we've been challenged on so many different levels. And the nice thing about Hillsdale is that we get to go for three days to be around like-minded people and we can talk about the experiences over the last year. We get new research. We are um, brought together around a few themes we think about how we can bring the research into our classrooms, how we can adapt what we do in the classrooms to be more relevant to the students, and how we can prepare the students to enter a dynamic, challenging world that is swirling with the political, the social, and the economic um, forces that we mentioned earlier. And they're more, they are more prepared than ever to meet the challenges and not take a nosedive but actually to rise up and say, all right, the world is a crazy place, but you know what? Compared to three, four, 500 years ago, it's an incredible place.